Hey big people, welcome back. Today I'd like to talk about beautiful people in romance books. I've read a lot of books. Shocking, I know. And most of those books are romance. Because I love reading about those feelings. The discovery of new attraction and wondering whether the other person is going to reciprocate. There's something so basically human about finding love. However, I've also read a lot of cheesy books. And one theme that I've noticed running through those books is that the authors seem to have a hard time moving on from attraction and into more meaningful relationships. When I'm reading a book, there's only so much physical description that I can take. If the hero's rock-hard abs are the main focus, it's really hard for me to take it seriously. I tend to roll my eyes when a heroine's berry red lips and tiny waist are expounded upon. Physical description is fine. It's good. I want to know that a hero and heroine are attracted to each other. However, should those characteristics really be the thing that we're focused on the most? Do we really need to go back to over and over to the fact that she's the spitting image of Aphrodite and he has the physique of the Statue of David? My objection isn't just that it's redundant, or that it flattens the characters into nothing but their physical attributes. No, my main problem is the message that it sends. It suggests that real love only happens between excessively beautiful people. It suggests that the first thing that we should be looking for in a companion is their hotness, and it perpetuates the body image crisis. If we teach young girls that the ideal man is good-looking above all else, we'll train them to ignore flaws and discount warning signs of abuse. We'll also train them to disregard guys with big hearts and impeccable manners just because they're not wildly attracted to them in the first place. Does that mean that good guys aren't handsome? No! But a person's physical attributes shouldn't be constantly at the center of your thoughts and conversation. I can think of several books where Sally brings home Roger to meet the parents, and at the end of the evening, Mom comments on what a nice guy he is, adding, and he's so good looking. First of all, awkward. Second of all, and your point is, why is that something to comment on? Maybe my family's weird, but I don't remember a time when my parents ever commented on the attractiveness of someone I was dating. If we congratulate our characters on snagging that good-looking man, we're going to teach our girls to congratulate themselves on snagging that good-looking guy, whether he's a nice guy or not. We'll also reinforce the poisonous idea that the girls' looks are the only thing that they're going to get themselves a man. And by the way, I'm referring to what girls will take away from this because that's the majority of the people that read my books. But this applies to women and men and everyone. Describing a character's physical attributes is important. But personally, I think less is more. If your hero or heroine finds their love interest to be attractive, you should say so. But don't keep bringing up their physical attractiveness over and over throughout the book. I love reading mentions of a sweet smile or kind eyes. But don't tell me how she gasps in shock each time the guy looks at her because she just can't believe he could be attracted to her. Of course, not every romance book does that. What I'm talking about is thankfully the exception and not the rule. So let's talk about Jane Eyre. Yes, it will always come back to Jane Eyre with me. Mr. Rochester is just a normal looking fellow. We know this because when Mr. Rochester asks Jane if she finds him attractive, she answers truthfully with a no. Yes, they are attracted to each other, but it's about so much more than their looks. It's about compassion and wit and honestly trying to understand one another. Characters' relationships should be built on lasting foundations just like real-life relationships. Readers need to be able to understand why characters are making a connection. What is it that makes them willing to drop their guard and take a chance on each other? We want books filled with deep, rounded characters, just like we want a life filled with deep, rounded people. So don't just give me a chiseled hero and a willowy heroine. Give me people who love and who laugh and who do stupid things. That's what makes great characters. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. Go jump over to my channel if you want to find other writing tips and readerly thoughts. 
There's also some fun stuff you might like. And if you'd like to listen to the audiobook of Just to Ella, that's in a chapter by chapter playlist found here.